In this video, we're going to look at pre-processing of the tension arm using a real-world FE analysis program. Just a quick review of the process. The tasks we need to carry out are applying materials, loads, boundary conditions, and meshing. Here is the CAD geometry, which has been imported, ready for analysis setup. So now we go ahead and we create the material properties. Here is a typical materials property menu where we can select the type of data that we want to put in. For meshing, we need to select the global element size. Here is the typical menu where we're selecting five millimeters as the element size. Now the mesh is doing its work and we normally see a progress meter rather like this. The time taken to carry out the meshing is directly dependent on the number of elements. For a given geometry, this will depend on the element size mesh is now complete with 10 solid elements. Now we want to create some special rigid elements. These will form links to the centroidal points of the two lugs. Here is the typical menu form for a rigid element. For each rigid element there are two tasks. The first is to pick the center node. The second is to pick all the peripheral nodes. Here we're going to choose the inner face. With these selections complete, the first rigid element is made. The spider-like arms link the center node to the nodes on the inner face of the lug. The second rigid element is created. These are sometimes called spider elements. The use of the two rigid spider elements is shown here. The large lug is constrained, the small lug is loaded. Spider elements are extremely useful for this kind of application. So now the center node of the large lug is fully fixed by constraining, as shown in the dialog here. Fully fixing the center node ensures that all the link nodes are also fully fixed. Now we come to the small lug, where we're going to apply point forces to the center node. The first load case is a force applied in the x direction to the center node. The second load case is a force applied laterally in the y direction at the center node. Now in the preprocessor we want to formally define three load cases. Two we've seen, the third is going to be a combination from the first two. Here is a typical tree view showing a schematic of the analysis setup. Subcase 1, load and boundary conditions are shown. Now subcase 2 and finally subcase 3, the combined load. Notice that the boundary condition remains the same for all three of the subcases. This is a requirement for linear static analysis. We can have multiple sets of loading applied, but just one boundary condition. In the next video, we look at post-processing this analysis. If you'd like to follow on, please click the link. Meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you shortly.